this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I pray that you have had a wonderful and a blessed day basking in the presence of the Lord, enjoying the weather as it's getting warmer. The season's changing. Time is changing. It seems like time has sped up. And we have to move with the time because God is doing something great and supernatural in all of our lives in this season. And we have to pay attention and watch God begin to reveal to you the mysteries of the gospel to transform your mind and your heart to become more like him as we see the signs of the time of the coming of the Lord. We look at the news every day. We see tragedies and accidents and problems and issues all around the world. But yet God is still good. His mercy endures forever. He woke you up this morning, closed you in your right mind, gave you another opportunity to praise him. Did you praise the Lord today? Did you get in a, a chance to take a moment to spend time in his presence, reading his word, meditating on the word of God, feeding your spirit? Are you closed in the full armor of God today? I tell you, when you take a moment out of the day and just begin to bask in God's presence, let the word of God minister to your heart, even gravitate to videos that are inspirational and Bible studies and teachings, things that can help enrich your spirit, it makes a difference in your life. So welcome to tonight's Bible class, Tuesday night Bible class. Welcome. I pray that you be inspired tonight from the Word of God, from the teachings God has inspired me to teach and instructed me to teach to, to help enrich you in your growth and help you grow in grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. You stay encouraged. Don't be discouraged. Stay encouraged. It's easy to get discouraged. It's easy to give up when things are not going the way you want to go in your life. But I want to encourage you tonight that God is still in control. He's on your side. He's reigning forever in power, dominion, and authority. Amen. I want to read a devotion, and then we're going to go into our prayer tonight. Read a devotion. From Jesus always. From Jesus always. It says, I am the one and only one who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. I came from him and I returned to him because I am God, the second person of the Trinity. I entered your world to provide a way for you to have a living, eternal relationship with your Father God. People do... People who do not know me have often stated that there are many ways to God, but this claim is absolutely untrue. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. I come to you, beloved, full of grace, because you have trusted me to save you from your sins through my sacrificial death on the cross. You have nothing to fear. You don't need to dread failure or performing below expectation. Since I am your savior. Oh my God, this is so good. And you cannot save yourself. Your security rests in my grace. Rejoice that I am both faithful and sufficient in spite of all the troubles of this world. In me, you may have peace. I have overcome the world. Reference scripture, St. John chapter 1, verse 14, chapter 14, verse 6, and St. John chapter 16, verse 33 are the reference scriptures to that devotion. Amen. I'm going to read this other one. It's really good today as well. It's from the book. Let me find it. Hallelujah, Jesus. We glorify you. We praise you. Amen. This other one is from Jesus Calling. Jesus Calling. And it says, Keep your eyes on me. 
not only for direction, but also for empowerment. I never lead you to do something without equipping you for the task. That is why it's so important to seek my will in everything you do. There are many burned out Christians who think more is always better, who deemed it unspiritual to say no. In order to know my will, you must spend time with me, enjoying my presence. This is not an onerous task, but a delightful privilege. I will show you the path of life. In my presence is the fullness of joy. In my right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. That is so awesome. Glory to God. Because I tell you, when you realize that Jesus is the only way, the truth, and the life, it doesn't matter what the world offers or what the world try to present to you to try to get you to follow a system that they have put in force to control your life. You allow the Holy Spirit to control your mindset, control your attitude. Sometimes we just have to say no. Just have to say no to people because we can become overwhelmed, overburdened by other things that people dump on us to do for them, to help them in their situations, and we neglect our own issues that we're dealing with. So we have to learn how to seek the Lord even when it comes to helping people because sometimes people will use it your gifts. They will use you until they use you up and drain you dry and they still have the same mess and the same issues. So we have to realize that when it comes to helping people, we got to pray for insight, discernment, wisdom, instructions from the Holy Spirit on what to do, how to do, and when to refrain from doing to help certain people in our lives. Amen. So let's have a word of prayer. So gracious God, our Father, I thank you tonight, Lord God, for your presence in our midst. I thank you, Lord God, for the glory of God being revealed in our hearts, oh God, as we learn how to worship you and to magnify your great name. Lord, tonight as I teach your word, Father, make my tongue the pen of a ready writer, my heart engraved with your word to speak from the oracles of God, the divine revelation from the heart of God to convey to your people that will help transform Change their mind, change their heart, change their lives for the better. Thanks, O oh God, you forgive us for our sins, knowing unknown sins, cleanse from all the righteousness. Help us remove the business of the day from our minds, that we we'll not be distracted from receiving what you have us to hear. But as your word declares, he that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the church. And we are the church, O oh God, help us to hear your word to help change our lives for the better. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Again, last week we were talking about we were talking about Baal wants it all. Baal wants your worship. Baal wants to control you. Baal wants you to follow a religious system. It doesn't want you to follow the truth. It doesn't want you to be obedient. It's deceptive. It's a way of trying to get what you want when you want it. You don't follow your leadership in your church because you feel they need to do what you want to do when you need them to do it and come visit when you're in the hospital. Even when they're busy, you want them to stop what they're doing to come see about you. The reason why God set a shepherd at the head of the church and, 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 and delegated other people in positions, deacons and other ministers to be the ones to help support the leader, to visit the sick, to visit the widows, to care for those who are poor, because that's the assignment of the church. The church is orchestrated by our Lord Jesus Christ to help display God's glory in the earth. And the only way his glory is being displayed in the earth is by our act of obedience to follow his word and do what God instructs us to do. Amen. If we don't walk in the truth of God's word, we're going to follow up a lie. We're going to find ourselves being frustrated, aggravated, discouraged. We're going to find ourselves suffering, suffering we shouldn't even have to deal with. Things happen when we walk in disobedience according to God's will. We talked about last week how Bill uses false accusation and lies because it conjures up stuff 
to talk about somebody else is not true. That's called gossip, backbiting. The Bible calls it tailbearers. Are you a tailbearer? Are you one that going around stirring up mess? Are you one that's standing firm in the faith of Jesus Christ, allowing the Lord to lead God and direct you in the way he has orchestrated for you to go? It's so important as a child of God to continue to maintain a righteous stand in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We talked about how Baal tries to seize unauthorized authority. And that's what the enemy does. You really pay attention. The enemy, he comes in a way to, that's illegally to access your mindset. The data bank of your mind. Our mind is like a computer. And in our minds, everything is stored. The, the information, the systems, the things that we live by, the things we, we, we do in life are, are, are controlled through our data bank. And is initiated through the system of our mindsets. And the enemy knows if he can access your mindset, he can spread a virus in your system to corrupt your data bank and cause your main frame to begin to deteriorate from the inside out, which is a component of your heart. You got to pay attention because the enemy is not playing fair with God's people. He's looking for a way to come into your life to destroy you. If you're not prayed up, you're not consecrated, you're not standing your word, feeding your spirit, you never know when the enemy's coming against you. It's very important as a child of God to pay attention, be watchful, and prayed up. Words as watch as well as pray. Because we have to be discerning when the enemy comes to other people to, to illegally access our lives. If we're not paying attention, we'll find ourselves being manipulated and controlled by the enemy in our thought life. One thing about the enemy, when you have an idol worship, it takes the place of the true living God in your life. And the enemy knows that I can get you to become immoral, full of iniquity. You have a government system that's controlled by man and God's not in it. Because they do not invite God into their decisions. That's why I always pray that God will send forth his prophetic anointing back into the government arena. Like he did in the days of, of judges and where he sent his prophets to speak a word to the leaders that they would govern his people the way he wanted them to govern them by truth and righteousness and the fear of God. But people are not fearing God today. You don't believe it? Look on the news. Reckless driving, stealing cars, robbing folk, killing folk, beating folks up, breaking in people's houses, tearing down their property. Why? Because they have given the enemy access into their mindsets to control their life. So the responses that they're re reacting according to is the leadership of the enemy and not the leadership of the Holy Spirit. There's no conviction of sin. Jesus said when the Holy Spirit comes, he will convict the world of sin and bring back to our remembrance things he taught us to lead us in his truth and his righteousness. But we're not listening to the voice of the Holy Spirit. We're listening to the voice of our flesh. And I tell you, when you get to that place, you listen to yourself. Oh, my God, you're in a dangerous place. And you're giving the enemy access to control your destiny. Amen. So we're going to get into our lesson tonight. Tonight, our lesson is dealing with Baal promotes a religious spirit. Baal promotes a religious spirit. You think about religious. The word religious is a word that's defined as an orchestrated system of control. In the church, we have different religions. 
We have the Methodists, the Catholics, the Buddhists, the Presbyterians, the Baptists, Baptists, the, the uh, Church of God in Christ, and all these different religious organizations that people have instructed and constructed themselves throughout the, the years. One religion is against another religion. Different religions believe different things. And we have to get back to the word of God. Because if you follow the life of Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ did not follow any religious system. He came declaring that I am the word. And the word was with God and the word was God. Because he came as an outward expression of the Godhead in the earth. He was the living word that walked among mankind, demonstrating what? The love of God. And the love of God compelled people to come to, to him from different regions. Wherever he traveled, wherever he went, people who had issues and had problems, they gravitated to Jesus. And they came to him seeking his help. Today, people are crying out for help. But they're crying out to the doctors, crying out to psychiatrists, crying out to their parents, crying out to their friends, they're crying out to the associations, different people who they think have the remedy to fix their problem. But there's only one who can fix your problem. There's only one that has a system that's orchestrated by the Holy Spirit, that's governed by the Word of God, that has the power and the anointing to fix your issue. That's Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Jezebel. My God, my God. This is this is really good. Jezebel, hallelujah. Had an abundance of religious zeal. She was so religious and devoted to Baal that she introduced idolatry to her husband, King Ahab. You hear that? Jezebel was so religious in her belief system to follow the structure in a mindset that was orchestrated by the enemy. When she introduced her husband to idol worship and then established a religious platform for false prophets in Israel. You know who false prophets are? Those who don't, don't speak the word of God. They don't speak truth. They prophesy. lie. They tell you a good filled message to appease your feelings and your emotions. But they're not prophesying the truth of God's word that brings conviction and change in your life. So they're speaking under the unction of demonic force a word that's not from God. Jeremiah says it like this. To prophecy when it's spoken come from the Lord. But he said, if a person prophesies a word and it does not come to pass, know that that word was not from God, but from us, from man. So we have to be careful when we're saying God gave us a prophetic word to speak, and we're not speaking truth. If you're not speaking truth, then you're speaking a lie to yourself, and God is not in it. And many times we prophesy so much information to mislead other people to believe the lie that we're speaking, which causes damnation to come into their hearts. Because we did not heed to the voice of God. I remember reading the story of ba Balak and Balaam. B Balaam was a, was a prophet. And God told him to prophesy to this king, and the king wanted to prophesy a lot. The king didn't like it because he said every time this man would prophesy something to him, something bad always would happen. 
And I tell you, when you don't pay attention to God's word, speak what God says to speak, you'll find yourself giving in to a seducing spirit. Listen to this. Balaam, non-Israelite prophet, described in chapter 22 through 24 of the book of Numbers, the fourth book of the Hebrew Bible Old Testament, as a diviner who is importuned by Balak, king of Moab, to place a maldiction on the people of Israel who are camped anonymously on the plains of Moab. And what that's talking about, if you read that in Numbers chapter 22 and chapter, through chapter 24, you find out that Balaam, this king summoned him to come and prophesy to the children of Israel. But he wanted him to prophesy something that was sound good. But God was bringing judgment on the king because the king of Moab was rebellious it did not follow God, but it was an idol worshiper. And God was bringing judgment on his people. And every time Balaam would prophesy, the king got mad at him. Because he did not like the words that came out of his mouth. How many times have you prophesied a word to somebody and they got mad at you because they felt you were lying about something? But one thing about God, if God speaks it, he'll perform it. And God would prophesy through other people to you a rhema word that will help you get right with God. If you don't have a desire to get right with God, you're going to always find yourself in a dark place of rebellion. Following an idol, God, following false worship, following false leaders, because they're not following God. Listen to this. She took her idols into the Jewish temples and erected them in the high places of the city. That's how bold she was. Remember how we talked about her, her husband, King Ahab? We wanted this one man named Naboth who had a vineyard. And, and, and uh, because he wanted that vineyard so bad, He would he wouldn't wouldn't he, he got wimp. Let's put it away, he became a wimp. When he went to the man to try to take his vineyard from him, the man told him, No, I'll not give it to you. He got sad in his heart. He went back to his wife, went to his room. He actually shut himself in his room first. And his wife came and, and asked him, What's wrong with you? He said, Well, I went to go see Naboth and I wanted his vineyard, but he won't give it to me. She said, Aren't you the king? And she said, Okay, well, I'll take care of it. So at that moment, that controlling spirit came upon her. She went to Namath and she stole this vineyard from him. All because he did not rise up in his authority as the king of Israel. Now she takes idol worship and she erects it in the temple of God with God has ordained his tabernacle to be a holy place. She even used the cloak of religion. Listen to this. You know what a cloak is, right? A covering. Of religion to manipulate the city officials. And she called for a holy fast to do her evil deed. You hear that? She called for a fast. She's not orchestrated by God. She's not following the spirit of God. She's following her own ambitions. And she decided to manipulate God's people to follow her in a holy fast that she can do her evil deeds. She was one of the most committed evangelists known in the Bible history. And she was religiously zealous to evangelize her entire community and convert the entire nation to her gods. She had a mission. She had an assignment. She had a purpose. And she knew that if she could seduce the people to follow her, she could take over the whole nation of Israel with idol worship. 
That's what I said. She wanted the communities. She wanted to convert the entire nation. Jezebel was strongly motivated in her worship, so much so that she had many gods, many of God's prophets murdered. And that's something. That's how evil she was. She carried out her evil plots, her evil demise, to do all types of mess that God had forbidden. And even kill God's prophets. That is sad, I tell you. It's really sad. When we get to the place where we allow the enemy to come in, seduce us, control our lives, manipulate us, we allow the enemy to take control of our thought life. Because one thing about the enemy, he's not playing fair. He kills us in our mindset. Because if he can get you, get you to follow a religious system, he can seduce you to following his idol worship and lies. Will you turn from the true living God to follow a false God that has no power and no authority? Jezebel was driven to expel any opposition to her God. That's how bold and how powerful she was. Because she rose up. She became the king. Because her husband wasn't acting in his position like he needed to be. So she overruled him. She, she did a spiritual treason over her husband and took over his authority and she walked in that authority to seduce God's people to follow her idol worship. And check this out. And she said, anyone that, expelled, that was expelled who did not follow her gods, going to the extremes To measure and establish him as the only one to be worshipped in all Israel. So she says, you're not going to follow the God you claim you, you serve. You're going to serve my God. My God is the only one to be worshipped in Israel. She did all this in the name of religion. Look at this. I found some scriptures. Mark chapter 16, verse 15 and 16. It says, And he said unto them, Go ye into the world and preach the gospel to every creature and baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And the reason why Jesus gave the disciples an assignment, a charge to stand up against idol worship, false religion, by preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. James chapter 1 verse 26 if any man among you seem to be religious and bridles not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is in vain. If you think your religion, your system of rules and regulations is the right way to live in life, and you don't bridle your tongue, you try to force me to follow after your, your belief system that's not of God, that's not lining up the word of God, you're deceiving yourself and your religion is in vain. James chapter 1 verse 27. Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and the widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. That's the system of religion Christ is looking for from a believer who claimed to be a child of God. Pure religion is undefiled. It's not perverted. It's not corrupted. It's not malicious. It's not deceptive. It's attending to the need of other people than yourself. 
Because when you care for other people, as you do unto them, you do unto the Lord. The spirit behind Baal worship to induce the Israelites into believing that religious acts were the key to being spiritual. The spirit behind Baal worship brought seduction and deception and control a mind-binding spirit to the Israelites to believe in a religious acts that were the key to spirituality. This is a religious spirit, one that promotes dead works and believe that doing is more important than being. If you're following a leader and they're always teaching you to keep being what you want to be and continue to promote dead works, and you're not following the truth of God's word, you need to run. You need to leave that place and go to a true place where worship is being enunciated in the atmosphere to promote God's glory. Dead works. People think just because I go and help people and serve people and do things, I'm going to get brownie points. There's no brownie points in the kingdom. If you're doing things to promote yourself for your own way of doing things to make yourself look good, to build your, your self-esteem, to make yourself feel better, look better and sound better than anybody else, you're following a religious system. Dead works. Because believing and doing the works of the kingdom is more important than trying to be something the world wants you to be. Paul says, follow me as I follow Christ. Be an imitator. If you're an imitator of Christ, you're not going to do dead works. The works you do when they're tried by the fire of the Holy Spirit, they're going to find themselves pure and sanctified in the presence of God by the Holy Spirit. A spirit of religion requires constant outward expressions of loyalty rather than inward. Heartfelt desire to serve. Religious system would keep you in the state of always wanting to be self-promoting. Want to always gravitate the attention to yourself. The reason why we want to lift up, be lifted up in pride because it makes you feel good about yourself. But pride, what it said, will destroy a nation. Pride will destroy you because a haughty spirit comes before a fall. Pride will, is a pride come for destruction, haughty spirit for a fall. So if I'm lifted up in pride, always walking according to dead works, building myself up, making myself always look good to try, try to be better, outdo other people in the church of God, I'm walking according to dead works. And the Lord is not pleased with that type of attitude. That's the attitude of the enemy that follows according to the Jezebel spirit of control. Heartfelt desire to serve is what God's looking for. He's looking for someone who's not trying to do things to get approval of man. But they're doing it because they know I'm approved of God. I've been orchestrated and driven by the Holy Spirit to do certain things I do. I really love and response for God and for his people. I've been in many churches in 40 years of ministry who always had themselves being edified by themselves. And there was no spirit of God in that place. It was always about the pastor. We worship him. We worship our leader. We, we had the best looking church. We had the, the finest we wanted in the church. We had all the stuff we wanted in the church, but God ain't in it. It says, except the Lord build a house. They labor in vain who build it. Except the watchman keeps the city. The watchman does what? He wake his butt in vain. Because it's all about God promoting you and not you promoting yourself. 
God calls you to be a minister of the gospel. You ought to be blameless and without reproach. You need to have your heart right with God, walking in holiness and righteousness and truth every day of your life. Not sometimes when you feel like it, but every day is a practice to turn away from idol worship of the flesh because we itemize ourselves when we start always thinking about ourselves and doing stuff for ourselves and don't care about nobody else. God is looking for a heart that's surrendered, a heart that's promoted in the kingdom of God to always exalt the Lord and worship at his footstool. If you come to the place where you find yourself always thinking about yourself, doing for yourself, don't care about nobody else, ain't trying to help nobody when they need help, and you have the means to help them, it says the Spirit of God does not dwell in you. Then what spirit is in you? Think about it. If I'm always turning folk away when I have the means to help them and I don't help them, what spirit is, has inhabited your mindset? What spirit is in your heart? It's not the spirit of God, but it's the spirit of Jezebel, the spirit of Antichrist, because you're against God's rule and regulation. God has a system that's in the word of God that's designed to help make you better. He says his word that righteousness, peace, and joy is in, in the Holy Ghost. It's in the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is not meat and drink. No, it's not about what you do in your flesh. It's about what you do in the spirit. Once I get my flesh to the place of subjection, then my spirit will lead me in direction that God wants me to go in to fulfill the call on my life to promote his glory in the earth, to help his people. We ought to be drawing people by our lives every day. Every day there needs to be the rule and regulation, the governing authority of the Holy Spirit in your heart, your mind, your spirit, that draws people to you. That gives you the opportunity to pour into their lives the gospel of Jesus Christ. But many times we, we, we think people are drawn to us because of the, our beauty or, or because I'm well fed, I'm well put together, I'm extinguished in my attire, I'm, I'm looking all pious and, 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 and glorified in myself. So we think people are granted to you just for that. That's a lie from the devil. Because the enemy will make you think it's about you and not about God. God will allow people to be attracted to you when you're supposed to be a child of God, a man of God, woman of God, and you're walking in divine authority, you're walking in your purpose, your calling in the earth realm, and the glory of God is on you. God will cause his spirit to draw people to you for the purpose of you to share the gospel. But you have to be prayed up when you leave your house. You have to be discerning and on guard and beware of religious spirits when they come against you. Because the enemy knows exactly what to do to deter you from your focus. Because he speaks into your ear gate. When he speaks to your ear gate, it defies the law of God's word. David said, it was good that I was afflicted, that I may learn your statutes. Sometimes God will allow you to be afflicted, spiritually afflicted, physically afflicted, that you can learn how to humble yourself to walk in obedience to his word. But even in that place, sometimes we grumble, we murmur, we complain, we doubt God, we start making ourselves sicker by the words of our mouth, we speak over ourselves. Let other people speak into our ear gates negative things that's toxic, which causes us to get worse and worse every day. But when you listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit, God will say, shut that voice out. That's not of me. That's the voice of the enemy. Sometimes, this is another one God gave me this week. Sometimes people will call your phone just to be a tailbearer. 
because they feel that you need to be the one to hear the juicy gossip about somebody else. So they feed you all this negative stuff about somebody in your church or even a friend of yours that you've been knowing for years or their marriage will be attacked and they talk about it. So you can go and spread the, the same gospel with somebody else. We have to pray who we allow to call us on the phone. If they start getting to the place they're being toxic, okay, I'll have to talk to you later. God bless you. Have a good day. Shut it down. You have to cut the line off from certain toxic people that come into your life through the phone, through the airwaves. The word says that the enemy is the prince of the power of the air, right? So he comes through the airwaves through communication, even communication systems. He knows exactly what to speak to you and how to convey the message to you and get it to you. You got to pay attention. Got to pay attention and know when it's the enemy speaking and know when it's God speaking because the enemy going to come in such a way to distract you and deter you from walking in your purpose. This, this spirit is characterized by an unhealthy drive to prove oneself through demonstration. You hear that? This spirit is characterized. So the character of an individual who follows the spirit of Baal worship demonstrates it. Because they will show you things that look like God, sound like God, that'll draw your attention, that'll captivate you to follow them. But all the time, there's a subliminal message hidden in what they've been saying to you to deceive and manipulate you from walking in God's will. And God says tonight, we got to pay attention. We got to wake up. Be on guard, guard your heart for other flows, the issues of life. Listen to this. It says it proves oneself through demonstration and commitment rather than expressing true love and devotion through intimate worship. You hear that? So they come with a deceptive mindset. Deceptive speech and conversation to demonstrate to you the way that they, they think you should follow, the way you should live, and what you should do when your marriage is under attack. They tell you what you need to do. They're not even married, but they got good advice for you. All the time is because they want your husband, they want your wife. They want you to be separate, they want you to break up so they can get them. So the enemy comes with the subliminal messages that you're not paying attention to to deceive you. Rather than expressing true love and devotion to encourage you when you're going under fire, let's stop and let's pray about it. Let's seek the Lord and call upon his name and faith, believing God he has the power and the remedy to fix your broken marriage. I don't know why God is talking about marriages right now, but God is saying that a husband is to be the head of the wife of Christ and the head of the church. And the wife is to be submissive to her husband as unto the Lord. If we're not going to be submitted to one another in the Lord, we need to go away. We need to part ways because we're not walking in God's will. Carnality will keep you alienated from the worship of God. Carnality will keep you in a place of division where you cannot hear the voice of God to fix your issue. It doesn't matter what you're going through. A broken heart, broken mind, broken spirit. Brokenness is brokenness. And the word says, God has the power to heal your brokenness. He sent his word to heal them. And deliver them from all destruction. Whatever it is that got you going to a place of brokenness is a place of destruction. And God uses that sometimes 
as a platform to elevate you. But you don't see it because you're distracted by the brokenness. When we get to the place in ourselves, we stop looking to the hills and comes our help. We start looking to our, our, our man, a brother, sister, whoever it is. Seeking the counsel of the world and not the counsel of God. We open the portal for the enemy to have access into your life. Not the other individual. Who cares what they do? But it's about you and God. And when you open the portal and give the enemy access to come into your mindset, he comes in in the place of Baal worship and destruction and deception to connive you, to manipulate you, and destroy you. But God is looking for a heart to express true worship, a devoted heart that surrendered to the Lord Jesus Christ through intimate worship, spending time in the presence. All day to day, I've been in God's presence. God has been feeding my spirit. I listen to some of the lessons I've done. I listened to the sermon I preached on Sunday about the breach in the pulpit. I listened to the lesson from last week. Bell wants it all. I listened to another message because God was feeding my spirit to remind me of who I am. When I shut out the voices of other people and other things that try to distract me, I hear God pouring revelation. Sunday, God gave me a prophetic word. And I heard the Lord say, there was a gulf full of water. And God said, in this gulf, it's starting to overflow because connected to the gulf is reservoirs. You've seen those reservoirs when you go down to a stream and you see that reservoir is like a little, little uh, tunnel, something like made like a half tunnel and the water going different directions in those reservoirs and it goes to different communities and different places. God said the Holy Spirit is the gulf that's filled up but it's overflowing through the reservoirs, to all of our lives, through the prophetic word of God, through the anointing, to empower you to begin to receive and believe God, what you've been praying for, and trust God has already done. But instead, what we do, things doesn't happen in the timely order we expect it to happen. We have to fix it ourselves. We go find our own strategies, our own remedies of what I can do to repair my situation the best way I can. Just like a tire, a tire on a bike. You have an inner tube. And you're riding your bicycle. And you roll over something sharp that punctured that inner tube. What we do, we go get a patch. We take the tire loose off the bike and we open the tire up to access the inner tube, and we get a patch. And we get some fire, and we melt that patch onto the hole of that inner tube. Instead of buying a whole nother inner tube, we take the quick and, and thrifty way of getting past our situation. We do that in the spirit. Instead of going to God, who has the power to fix your situation to promote his glory, we want to patch up work. We want to get a patch over our hearts when it's broken. We want a patch over our broken marriages or broken relationships, over our finance. We want a patch. We want to patch it up. We don't have the, the true solution to fix the issue so we get a substitute. So we follow the Jezebel spirit to get a substitute to fix what's messed up in our lives. God is saying tonight, I'm breaking you of that spirit because it's not of God. The spirit of the enemy that's coming into your life to deceive you to thinking that you always have to be the one to fix other people's problems, fix other people's issues and situations. You have to be the one to do this, do that for them. 
Some things God did not tell us to do. But we do it in our own accord. Then we call it God. Then when we're tired, we're drained, we're frustrated, we're aggravated, we feel like giving up, we feel faint-hearted. All of a sudden, depression starts settling in because you're overwhelmed. When my heart is overwhelmed, I should do what? Run to the rock. There's higher than I. But instead, we turn to the substance of the world. What we just talked about, the religious acts. We go to religious acts, which may even be required to indulge in alcohol, indulge in pornography, indulge in sexual sin, indulge in drugs. We turn to everything to pacify, to put a patch over the issue instead of allowing God to come in and fix us the right way. He says a broken spirit he would not despise. But instead of coming to God broken and telling God what I'm going through, I feel I got to fix it myself. The commitment is based upon performance rather than relationship. You hear that? The commitment to always feel I'm in control is based on performance. The commitment to think I have to be the one to always help people and do things for brownie points, for self-approval and praise of men is performance. Whatever you do, do as unto the Lord Jesus Christ. Allow God to lead God and direct you in the way he ordained for you to go according to his truth and righteousness. Many people today have the same type of religious zeal and it's the spirit of Baal that influences them. The spirit of religion causes people to become extremely legalistic and dogmatic in their religious views. In the same way that Jezebel was controlling the spirit seeks control wherever there is an, a, is an authority structure. If Jezebel is an operation in a local church, for example, a pastor or leader may exert so much control that the spirit of God is not allowed to minister to the congregation. What am I just talking about that, being in control? You can do so much and call it God, and God don't even be in it. It be legalistic. Your system, the rules and regulation. You become dogmatic. Well, you indoctrinate your own doctrine and not follow the truth of God's word. Also, many times the worship becomes a religious tradition rather than an avenue of glorifying God. Jezebel perverts true worship of God and turns into rules and regulation and laws. Because when you get into the place of a legalistic system, you have a system in place that no one can break or disrupt that system. Because it's your order, the way you got your church structured, and they have to follow this to the T. And when God is not in it, the Holy Spirit is not there. There's no anointing. Because sometimes, the Holy Spirit will disrupt your order because God is in control. When you get into a place where everybody gets into corporate worship, oh my God, you release the dynamite of the Holy Spirit to explode in the atmosphere, every demonic attack, every assault that comes into people's minds and their hearts and their spirit, and it drives it out because worship is it begins to invoke the glory of God to come and fill the tabernacle. I've been in many places of worship and the glory cloud came in. And I saw the Spirit of God in a glory cloud filling the atmosphere. That's that intimate worship. When you get into that intimate worship corporately, where everybody's in one accord, 
God don't mind coming out and showing up. He don't mind showing up in the atmosphere. He don't mind allowing the angels to manifest themselves. I've been in places where angels manifest themselves. Well, I was ministering, and people said, I saw two angels standing by you, Michael and Gabriel. Because sometimes God will allow the angels to appear before the people of God to invoke worship. Religious systems, rules and regulations, it defies God's order of worship. How many times have you witnessed crimes Involving Christian leaders. You hear that? We, we heard this many times on Facebook, in the news. Pastors being exposed. Bishops being exposed. Apostles being exposed. Because of their secret sins. The more you conceal it, God reveals it. And when God begins to expose you, all your dirt comes to the limelight. And God will begin to show the people who you really are. Because God is not to be mocked. What's a man sword? That should also reap. Some leaders have compromised Christian standards and morality because the evil powers of Jezebel seduced them away from true holiness and godly character. It's sad. Sad, it's sad, it's sad when we allow the enemy to seduce us, to turn away from the truth of God's word because of fame and fortune, because of the things the world can offer us. We can become millionaires and, and we can say we did it without God. Even though sometimes God will let you become a millionaire. But you allow God to be expelled from your millions, from your life, then it becomes you and not God. And when it becomes you, I said it Sunday, God told the prophet Amos, prophesy to the children of Israel and tell them that you left my house empty and you worried about yourself, the things you have, you did everything to glorify your house. He says, I blew on your finances. I blew on everything you have. It caused you to lose it. And God said because of that, he invoked the heart of repentance. He's looking for true holiness and godly character to be revealed out of all of our lives as the children of God. I'm going to close in just a moment. So recently we heard, for an example, a priest molesting children. And yet when the proper church discipline is needed, little or no discipline is applied. Have we heard that before in the news? Many times we heard these things happen. And they get a slap on the wrist and continue to maintain the position. Jezebel religious spirit of Baal convinces, convinces us that we should have mercy and overlook injustice done. The Jezebel spirit, it rebels against divine order, even bringing discipline, making wrong right. Correction in a person's life. But the enemy knows if I can keep you out of order, he can put a sign in your life out of order. Because he can keep you from following God's word. You stay out of order with God. Your mind is out of order. Your desires out of order. Your heart out of order. Your life out of order. Everything about you becomes out of order. You ever been to a place where you had to go to the gas station and use the bathroom so bad and the sign on those out of order? And you know you had to go right then and there? The same way in your spirit. We know we need to run to God. We need to come to God right now. But the enemy is put a sign in your life out of order. And you believe that lie. To allow him to inflict you with a sinful heart to believe that I'm out of order and I can stay out of order with God. Instead of coming to a place of repenting, he convinces me that I can overlook the injustice in my life. I keep doing the, the wicked things I do. I keep on molesting kids, doing things to hurt other folk. I keep doing all this injustice. True justice involves righteous discipline. 
Yet we compromise the standards of holiness and continue to allow injustice by turning the other cheek when godly standards are needed. We turn a blind eye to injustice because we refuse to follow obedience. When you don't follow and heed to the obedience of the voice of the Holy Spirit, you're like telling God, I'm slapping your face, God. You're, the blood of Jesus wasn't good enough. It, it, it didn't have no power to change my life. I thought I was born again, but, but yet I'm still living the life of the world because of my desires. and still want to lust out the flesh, lust the eyes, the pride of life. I still want to do the things that please my flesh. So, God, I really don't need you right now. And God said, okay, go, go ahead. You do it your way. I, I'll go ahead and let you do it. Matter of fact, he says, what I'll do, I'll take the hedge of protection from around you. Not let the enemy come into your life. Let you follow the desires of your heart to do what you want to do. Follow your religious system, the structure of your mind. And I'll let you fall into your own pitfall of despair until you come to repentance. Remember that it was Jezebel who used religious religion to murder Naboth. She called a religious fast to get her deeds accomplished. How often do we say God told me to do, do that as an excuse for not being accountable to remain holy and pure in our deeds and intentions? How many times you've done something wrong and you thought it was God, you believed it was God, but in your conscience you knew you were wrong? But you said God told me to do it. You just lied on God. God said a liar when I tell you the sight. But a liar will find their place in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the lake of fire. So you have to be careful when you're doing things that are not of God and you call it God. I truly believe God and God's mercy and restoration or restoration you require adjustment. In the same way it seduced, it seduced the Israelites Baal, the strongest spirit behind Jezebel, attempts to seduce us in believing that religious acts are the key to being spiritual. You hear that? The Baal worship, false worship, idol worship, is was the strongest spirit behind Jezebel's influence, who continually, even today, attempts to seduce us to the fallen lies and heresy, false doctrine, false leaders. We must be ready to confront this religious spirit and keep it from turning us away from righteousness. We have to be ready in season and out of season. Paul instructed Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 4, to preach the gospel in season out of season for reproof, for correction, in sound doctrine. Because if we don't preach the word in season out of season, you find yourself being seduced by the Jezebel spirit. The God is saying tonight, pay attention. Wake up, pay attention. Allow the spirit of God to draw your attention to himself. Because when you get into the Word of God, the Word of God is like an x-ray. An x-ray does what? It exposes what's inside of you, your organs, your bone structure. It exposes, even if you have a fracture, it exposes it. The Holy Spirit through the Word of God has an x-ray. It exposes the fractures in your life. It exposes the brokenness. It exposes the heart that's out of order, that's not functioning the way God designed for it to be. It exposes a mind when the neural system of the spirit is out of whack. It's not lined up with the word of God. And he gets to show you how God has the remedy to come into your life to change everything about you for the better and to fill you with his godly character and godly nature that you can walk by faith 
and not by sight into the promise of his word. If you desire to follow him, then follow him. So if any man desires to come out to me, let him first deny himself and die to himself and take up his cross daily. Let me say sometime when you feel like it at the heat of the moment. It's a daily process of sacrificing yourself in order to receive intimate worship. Because when you get to the place of intimate worship with God, you're dying to yourself. And intimate worship provokes the presence of God to inhabit your tabernacle, to inhabit your atmosphere around you. Every time people come in my house, they all say the same thing. It's such a peace in your house. I feel at rest when I come into your house. I feel at ease when I come into your house. And the reason why, because I spend time in intimate worship. Not only that, I play worship music in the atmosphere. I sanctify my atmosphere. So when people do come into my house, it provides a safe haven, an opportunity for God to minister to them, to bring healing and relief from pressure and whatever it is that's weighing on their spirit to set them free from the inside out. We're going to close at that point. But Father, I thank you tonight for this word, God. I pray that you have my father and deaf ears. But help us, Father God, to receive this word with meekness, to keep us humble, to keep us submitted. Help us examine our hearts to see if we have fallen prey to Baal worship and repent, God. That we come back to you, the fountain of living waters, the bread of life, and come back to you, Father, the essence of everything we need in our life, O oh God. That you clean us up and fill us up with your spirit, God. And that's, O oh God, that you come into our mindsets to change our thinking from the mind of the flesh to the mind of the spirit. Because you said the mind of the flesh is an enemy of God. But the mind of the spirit is life and peace. Let your peace inhabit our hearts, O oh God, tonight, that we learn how to take a moment to breathe in the breath of life that comes from you, God, and rest in your presence. And I thank you in Jesus' name. Let healing flow, God. Those who need healing right now, God, my sister in the hospital, Vicky, God, touch her body, touch her mind, touch her spirit, God. Let healing flow, God, that her organs will respond to the Lord of God. Her blood pressure will be regulated, Father God. The lupus and, and, and Father Alger, Father God, heart condition that she's dealing with God will be healed by the blood of the Lamb. Those who lost loved ones, God, will find comfort and grace in your presence, God. Minister, God, to them. Peace, O oh God, in their hearts to get through their time of sorrow. And ask, O oh God, that you be glorified in everything we do, in everything we say, in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. Amen. I thank you all for tuning in tonight. Hallelujah. Praise God. I pray that word has meant to you. Many of you have probably missed the beginning when I first started out. But the lesson will be on YouTube t tonight. It will be on YouTube. You can go back to YouTube channel and revisit the lesson for last week and this week. Allow the Holy Spirit to minister to your heart this word because I tell you this word has the power to transform, to make us become more and more like the image of Jesus Christ in the earth. If you desire to follow him, you desire to be filled like him. When you desire to be filled like him, you desire the overflow. And the overflow will come out of you into somebody else that's around you that they can experience the same joy and peace that's found in the presence of the Lord. Amen. I want you to repeat after me tonight as I do each week. Somebody might be listening to this lesson, don't know Jesus, the Lord and Savior, never been born again. The words that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever should believe in him should not perish, but should have everlasting life. You can receive this life tonight by accepting Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your heart, believing that he died for you on the cross, he was buried and rose again according to the scriptures on the third day, 
to bring you new life and give you for your for all your sins. Amen. Just pray this simple prayer with me tonight, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. I ask you, Lord God, to come into my heart. Forgive me for my sins, knowing and unknown sins, and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. And I thank you for saving me. If I was a backslider, God, I thank you that you just restored me back to right standing with you, God, in relationship with you. And I thank you in Jesus' name that it is done. In Jesus' name, amen. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. Praise the Lord. I tell you, this is a good lesson. It blessed me tonight. And I pray you stay encouraged, encouraged, Pastor Denise, Pastor Deborah, Minister LaShonda. Y'all stay encouraged. I don't see anybody else on here tonight but just you three so far, but that's okay. But may the Lord continue to bless and keep you, Lord. Turn your face toward the Lord, lift his counsel upon you, the Lord give you peace. The Lord says again, we'll be back on again next week, 6 o'clock hour. And I pray you continue to study your word, to grow in grace and in the knowledge of who you are in Christ Jesus. And knowing that the power has been given to you over all the powers of the enemy. Walk in your authority. Walk in the word. And you will not fulfill the lust of your flesh. May God continue to bless and keep you all. You have a great night. Shalom.